Social Security is a critical retirement program that provides income to millions of Americans and is the cornerstone of retirement planning for so many. It's understandable that people are concerned about the future of the program, especially in light of the recent headlines about Social Security going broke or that Social Security is bankrupt. Hi, and welcome back to Stop Being Sold. My name is Michelle, and I'm here with Brian. And in today's video, we're discussing where we stand with the solvency of Social Security benefits. You know, Michelle, as a uh, 25 year advisor and a financial planner, it's my job to provide guidance and reassurance to you sure. and help you navigate the complex landscape of Social Security's finances. So today we're staying clear of all the hype and the noise and sticking to the facts that where we are with this situation. Okay. According to recent projection by Social Security's trustees, unless Congress acts by 2035, the program will face a significant shortfall that would require across the board benefit cuts up to 20%. This prospect can be alarming for those who rely on Social Security right. to meet ends and make ends meet. Absolutely, rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's been one of the biggest challenges facing Social Security is the NB imbalance between revenue coming in and benefits going out. It has mm -hmm. been. Uh, the program's funded mainly by the 12.4% Federal Insurance Contributions Act, which is FICA tax on your wages, which is split evenly between employers and the workers. However, with lower birth rates and rising income inequality, there are fewer workers paying into the system than there are retirees collecting benefits. Right. Additionally, Social Security collects FICA contributions only up to a certain wage, and that's $160,200 in 2023 leaving a growing share of wages outside the taxable base. Oh boy. So what are the current proposals to fix the solvency problem? Okay. Kind of divided here. Um, Democrats generally favor expanding benefits slightly and extending trust fund solvency by end a new tier of payroll tax contributions for high earners. So they're proposing higher, proposing taxing higher income earners more in order to pay for everyone. Mm -hmm. And how do they define high earners? Are we talking 160,000 and above, which is the current uh, FICA wage limit? Yeah, uh, some proposals are for much higher thresholds, even up to 200,000 of income. So a person making $1 million and $160,000 today all paid the same in Social Security taxes. It, that doesn't make sense. No, not really. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about the other side of the aisle. What are Republicans currently proposing? Yeah, um, basically, Republicans have proposed various solutions with some, a handful of them, advocate, advocating for significant benefit cuts and others wanting to leave benefits untouched. This is that kind of got blown out of the water a bit because in all honesty, um, where it says a handful, there was two that came out and said, yeah, we want uh, benefit cuts. That's not, not the whole Republican Party, but the media jumped all over that one. So, Well, yeah. And I, I mean, I can't imagine that they would ever go over well having yeah. benefit cuts, especially considering Social Security benefits aren't currently enough to cover most retirees' expenses. Exactly. You know, I've discussed this for decades. The one who cuts yeah. gets cut politically. It's that simple. 100%. Okay, so there are ideas floating around Congress, but nothing is really in the works, correct? Correct. Um, there's been a couple proposals kicked out there, but nothing's came to the floor of either uh, either House or Senate. Um, most experts believe that Congress will eventually address the program's financial problems, although the timeline and specifics of any reforms are still uncertain. Uh, it's unlikely that some combination of benefit cuts and revenue increases will be necessary to address Social Security's uh, financial challenges. Sure. Do you think any of these new new changes will affect current beneficiaries or are they going to um, what's it, phase no. it in? No, it's unlikely to affect current beneficiaries, but I can't foresee the, uh, the future. Most likely emergency measures will be taken to prevent severe benefit cuts from happening. You know, Brian, that's always the one thing that I thought you could improve on, that you can't see the future. <laughs> Work on that just a little bit. <laughs> All right. So all kidding aside, with something so critical to retirement planning and to retirement income, one would think that Congress would make this a top priority, like now, not wait until that, you know, 11th hour, right? Right. So let me ask you this question. In light of the fact that Social Security 
the, the fact that, let me rephrase that. So in light of the fact that the future of social security and what it might look like is so uncertain, what are people nearing retirement supposed to do? Like, how do you plan for something when you don't know what it will be in like five years, seven years, eight years, 10 years? Yeah. Uh, first of all, any changes made will be phased in. Okay. okay. So they're going to be phased in over a three year, five year period, uh, maybe even up to 10 years. So it's not to upset the system as it is. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to make immediate changes unless they wait till the 23rd hour before benefits get cut in 2035. Well, let's hope they don't wait until that very last hour like they have on so many other things. Yeah, right. Sure. I mean, now back to your question, how do you plan for Social Security when yeah. the future is unknown? You know, as a financial planner, I've always told people it's important to understand your options and make informed decisions about claiming your Social Security benefits. Right. And right now, that means retirement planning based on what we know the rules are right now today in real time. Mm -hmm. For example... Delay claiming benefits may be a start, smart strategy for many, especially when we're starting to live longer. But a recent study found that virtually all workers aged 45 to 62 should wait beyond age 65 to collect their benefits as they could lose tens or even hundreds of thousands of dollars by claiming too early. But claiming trends have been moving in the right direction with a fewer people claiming benefits at age 62 and more starting to wait until the age of 66. However, only a small percentage of seniors wait until age 67 or later, which can lead to much higher benefit payments in the long run. Right. You know, we're going to drop a link to the video uh, that we did on the study that Brian just mentioned. So definitely check that out. It's in the pinned comment and also the, the description below. And also while you're at it, hit that like button, subscribe and comment. All right, Brian. So anything else that you want to add before we wrap this up? Yeah, you know, honestly, everything's going to be fine. Just like every bill passed in Congress, some win, some lose. Here, all retirees, current and future, are at stake. Nobody will want to upset this voting demographic. It's that simple. Let's hope they can get it together and not wait till the very end. That's all I have to say. <laughs> so I agree. I agree. All right. Well, on that note, thanks for this, Brian. Thanks to everyone who watched. Do not forget to like and subscribe. Brian and I put out videos on the daily and we do quite a few on social security. So anything yes. that comes up in that realm, we will be covering it. I agree. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Brian. Have a good Thank one. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.